Hey, so I noticed that deploying Murn apps to Heroku is kind of a big pain for a lot of people. So I put together this template to make it a little bit easier. First, we're gonna go through a kind of tour of the different files and how things are working in the folder structure. And then we're gonna go through how you actually deploy this thing. The way it works is the back end is the root folder, the root directory, and a folder that is inside of that directory is the client folder, and that's the front end. The back end is the whole thing. The client is a folder inside of that. That's where the front end is. It's a create react app named client. So we've got our front end in the client folder, our node modules, git ignore, our main server file is index.js. We got the package lock.json and the package json. This stuff is just application information. You want to change that to whatever your information for your app and your name is. The main you want to leave alone because that's saying that the index.js file here is our main server file. So these are the various scripts that you can run from the root directory of this project. npm run whatever. So npm run client install, for example, will install the client. Start starts up our server with the index.js. Uh, server is going to do the same thing, but with nodemon, so you don't have to stop and restart your server every time you change it. Just save it and it'll automatically refresh it. Client is going to start up the front end. Server install installs the back end. Install all is going to install concurrently first, which allows us to do both things at the same time to install the back end and install the front end. So concurrently lets you do two things at the same time. Uh, and then dev also is going to use concurrently. This is going to be the main script you run to run this project locally on your machine, to run it on your local host. So if you say npm run dev from the root directory of this project, it'll concurrently both run the server and run the client from one terminal. So you don't have to open up a second one to do the client. And then Heroku post build, you're not going to use that. Heroku is going to use that when you upload your code to Heroku. It's going to use that to make an optimized build of your project. The engine section just specifies which version of Node and NPM you're using. So if you open up a terminal on your computer and you run Node-V, that'll tell you which version of Node you have, and NPM-V will tell you which version of NPM you're running. Just make sure that you put the matching versions, the correct numbers that you have in your machine when you run these commands in your terminal. Make sure that you put those in there. License is MIT. Keep that as MIT if you're a cool kid. MIT is the cool kid's license. Um, dependencies, we've got cores, which is cross-origin resource sharing. That's just going to let uh, requests happen between the front end and back end. Dot env is going to let us use environment variables. Express and Mongoose, you obviously know if you're looking at MERN application templates, but Express we're using to make our server. Mongoose is how we're connecting to the database. If you want to use something else to connect to the database, maybe you want to use the MongoDB driver or something, just make sure you npm rm to remove uh, Mongoose before you uh, install whatever else you're doing, just so that you don't pointlessly have Mongoose in there that you're not using. So obviously there's also the readme. You're going to want to replace all of the stuff in there with information about your application. There's also the client folder, which is basically a create react app, but it's got two things that make it a little bit different. So the first thing is the jsconfig.json. What this is going to let you do is absolute imports instead of relative imports. So let's say you're working on a component that's inside of a folder, inside of a folder, inside of a folder, and you want to import some other component that you need to go all the way back outside of those folders and then go inside of the folder where that component lives. So first, if you have relative imports, you have to do dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash to get to the SRC folder. And then you go inside of whatever folder the component you're looking for is in. But uh, if you have absolute imports, you can just start from the SRC folder every time. So notice there's no dot slash, there's no slash. It just starts with the name of whatever the folder is that's inside of SRC that you are trying to look inside of. Relative imports will still work in this app. If you're more comfortable, you want to stick with those or you want to use both of them. Both will totally work in here, but these just kind of look cleaner. This is a good article from Hacker Noon that kind of explains how to go through it. I'll put a link to it in the description of the video. The other thing is in the SRC folder, the setup proxy JS file. And what this is going to do is in local development, the server is going to be running on port 8000. The front end is going to be running on port 3000. So we need something that says, hey, requests that are being made from the front end, don't send those to port 3000, proxy those over to port 8000. When this is deployed to Heroku, Heroku is going to handle all that for us. It's going to say, hey, you go on port whatever. But in development, we're going to tell the front end, your port 3000 back end, your port 8000. And any requests from the front end that begin with slash API, we're going to redirect those to instead of 
localhost 3000 slash API slash auth, for example, this would get redirected to localhost 8000 slash API slash auth, even though this is a request being made by the front end, which is running on port 3000. This section of the create react app docs goes into details about the proxying stuff. I'll put a link to this in the description for this video. Then we've got index.js, our main server file in the back end, and what it's doing is importing some node module stuff and the built-in path module from node, and it's setting up our express server. It's setting up .env so we can use environment variables, setting up cores so we can use cross-origin resource sharing. It's saying, hey, if Heroku did not put a port number on the process.env, just go ahead and use 8000 as our default if we're in development. And then down here, we've got the static file declaration, so what this is saying is, hey, if the process.env.nodeenv is equal to production, node environment, then we know that this is in deployment, it's not in development. Else, we know it is in development. So if we're in our local development mode, we're gonna serve up the index.html file right out of the public folder where it currently is. When we push this to Heroku, Heroku is going to make a build out of our app, and then that index.html file will be inside of a folder named build. So when we're in production, we want to serve up our static files a little bit differently than when we're in development. Then we're connecting to our database using mongoose.connect. And then once that happens and we know that the connection to the database is established, then we're saying app listen on whatever the port is, whether it's 8000 in local development or whatever Heroku says in production. Notice that we're using the process.env.mongo URI to connect. So you're going to need a .env file in the root directory, and it needs to have a mongo underscore URI property, and then an equal sign, and then over here with no quotes, just paste in whatever your MongoDB connection string is that you get from MongoDB. To find that string, just go to your project and your cluster, go to connect cluster, connect your application, and then just copy this. Then just paste that in here, but obviously change password to whatever you made the password for the user that you set up for that database. Now, we don't want people to have access to this, so it's included in the .gitignore. It says .env right there. So .env will never get pushed to the GitHub repository because we don't want people to be able to see this. Problem is that we also need this when we're in deployment. So the way we're going to fix that is we'll go to whatever the project you're working on is, go to the settings, go to reveal config vars, and then you're going to set Mongo uri and you're gonna paste in whatever your string your connection string was there and then hit add so we've got some setup up here and our static file stuff down here so you're going to want to make sure that any of your routes that you include go right here in between those we're going to open up a terminal from the root directory of our application we're going to say git init to create a new empty git repository git add all to add all the files we currently got git commit with a message we'll say init because we're initializing and we're gonna say Heroku login if you're not logged in. I'm already logged in, so I'm not gonna, but you go ahead and do that. Then we're gonna say Heroku create. This is gonna give us two URLs. Copy the second one. And then we're gonna say git remote add Heroku, paste in that second URL. It's gonna say fatal remote Heroku already exists. Ignore that. We're gonna say git push Heroku master. This is going to take a while, a few minutes, so go grab some coffee or something. Okay, it finished pushing to Heroku and building, so now what we can say is Heroku open, and this is going to open our project, but there's a problem. So if we say Heroku logs, it's going to tell us that there's a problem because mongoose.connect expects a string, but it got undefined because this .env file does not exist in deployment because we .git ignored it, so we need to go to Heroku and add our environment variables. So we need to go to our project on Heroku, go to settings, go to reveal config vars. We're going to create one named mongo underscore URI, and over here, copy paste your connection string, hit add. Now if we go back to our application, we reload. Now our basic page shows up. So obviously Gentle Spire 18057 is not the most marketable brand name and you're probably not gonna want the default name that your Heroku app gets. So you can go ahead and say Heroku apps colon rename and then just put whatever name you want here. Much more marketable brand name. And now it's updated so that if we say Heroku open 
Now we're going to get much more marketable brand name dot Heroku app dot com with our hello world. Alternatively, if you don't want to push to Heroku separately from GitHub, you can just go to the deploy section, go down to connect to GitHub and then connect this project to a GitHub repository. Then every time you push a commit to that GitHub repositories main branch, Heroku is going to recognize that there were changes, take that commit and make a new deployed build out of it. So yeah, I hope you find this useful. If you did, give it a like, comment, subscribe, whatever. Um, I'll probably put up more.